Hi guys, um, in this video lecture, we will talk about the design of beams, okay? So kind of we consider the uh, maximum uh, normal stress in the beam, then what the size should be, right? Uh, so before that, we let, uh, let me talk about uh, something interesting, okay? So as I said, you have uh, a, a piece of wood, right? So uh, you can use uh, like this, right? So kind of uh, put a beam like this. Right? Or you want to support something, you can put a beam like this. Right? So this is, let me give you some numbers, right? Like a 40 millimeter. This one is uh, 10 millimeter. So this one is millimeter right so this one is uh, 40 millimeter okay so when you go to gym right uh, you will, if you look at the beam okay they will use like this way why so we know okay uh, the normal stress right so you go to this one so when you talk about beam, okay, if you want to see that beam, so uh, let me talk about the maximum bending moment, okay. The maximum bending moments will be, so it always in the center, right? It, uh, it is independent of the shape of the beam, right? So we have maximum bending moment here, so that means uh, we have bending mo maximum bending moment, it's a, it's a constant, right? So then, this one we can rewrite it as this. So S is second modulus, right? Okay. Now, what's the difference from this this two two, right? So the first one, second modulus. So second modulus will be modulus divided by h over two, right? So this one be uh, h cubic divided by h over two. So uh, I write down here. So this one is width cubic uh, height. So it will be. So it'll be this one. So you can see what's the difference. For this one, if you place the beam like this, so we name it as one. So it will be B will be 10 multiplied by 40. Right? So it will be uh, 1660,000 divided by 6. Right? So this is for the first case. Second one. Second models will be okay. The width will be 40, height will be 10. So this one will be of 4,000. Okay, so we have different section models, right? So now back to the So it will be equal to maximum bonding on the same. The second one will be okay. What we can conclude here? So that means for the first beam, the result is stress. It's just a one quarter. This is a sixteen thousand. This is a four thousand, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So the, the result is a normal uh, normal stress is just a one quarter of the second one. So that means the result stress is much smaller in this one, right? It's safer. That means the beam is stronger. Uh, in another word, that means this beam can take more load. Okay. That's why you place beam like this. Okay. So. Uh, let's talk about uh, 
another comparison, okay? If you work in a railway, uh, railway company, okay? So your boss asks you to design a railway, okay? So you have an option, okay? You give, a, give you a piece of materials. So then you need to design a certain long, right? Like a, a 10 meter long, okay? But the material is same, okay? Uh, then you may think, okay, what kind of cross section I should have, right? First one you may have, okay, how about the uh, rectangle cross section, right? The second one you may have, okay, how about a circular one? And also the last one is you may see, okay, if you take a look at the real wheel, okay, it's with the with uh, white fan, okay. So circular. And also square, okay. So apparently, okay, the material, the amount of material is same, the length is same. That means the cross section area should be same, right? So then, which one is better? How to understand that? So we know, okay, the maximum normal stress is equal to maximum annual moment divided by section modulus, right? So apparently, no matter what kind of shape you have. So the uh, the maximum bump, the load will be same, the bending moment will be same, right? That means what are you looking for? You are looking for the maximum, the maximum section modulus, right? So if I have higher section modulus, then the resulting stress will be lower. So that means it's safe, right? So that means we are looking for the maximum uh, section modulus. Okay, so. The second modulus for the square one, right? So this is the height is h, the, the width is h as well, okay? So they have same, they have same, okay? Uh, they have same cross section area, right? Okay, so for this one, cross section area will be this one. So section modulus will be so this one will be so this B here will be H so it will be equal to uh, you cancel each other then you have So then, because you know cross section area is same, so I want to replace uh, with a here, so it will be equal to h square by six. So it will be equal to a h square by six. It will be equal to one point six six seven. Right. So this is a, the section modulus for square cross section, right? So for a circular one, because the cross section area is same, right? So then A will be equal to, for this one, is equal to pi B power 4 is equal to this one, right? So then they have same cross section area. Okay, so for the section modulus, it will be equal to uh, So pi uh, d power 4 divided by 64 divided by d over 2, so it will be pi d power 32, right? This second modulus. Okay, so I still use this form, okay, to, to express the second modulus for circular cross section. So then, okay, I have this one. So pi d divided by 4. So then we have 1d left divided by 8. So right. 
They are same, right? Pi d power of, d power of 3 divided by 32. So this one will be a, right? Okay. For this one, if we uh, use h to express d, so d will be equal to h. So now I can rewrite this one will be equal to a two h right. So this one should be equal to a h. So this one will be equal to Stop here a little bit. So then, which one is better? So this one, the second model is a point of one six six seven. This one, point one four one. So apparently, the square design is preferred right? because it has a larger uh, section model. So let's uh, discuss this uh, flange cross section. For the flange, okay, we 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 will talk about the ideal flange. So that means we have all pieces of materials. We we just uh, manufacture into two pieces, two plates. Okay. So the distance from here to here, this is the B one. This is the B two. The height. For one piece is H1 to H2, okay? And also H2 minus H1 is infinitesimal, okay? So this means it's very small. It's almost nothing. And so and also you may ask, okay, we need to connect these two pieces together, right? So these two pieces are connected by magic power. This is ideal case, right? Ideal means does not exist, right? By magic power, okay? So that means we just use all material for this one and this one. There's not just no material for this one, right? So magic power. Okay, so this one will be the neutral surface. Okay. Then the area of this one, okay, because the total area is A, right, so this one is will be half. Okay, and that means H2 minus H1, B2 minus B1 is equal to H uh, A over 2, right? Okay, so then for the moment nature, we know that. Okay, so for this one, we just uh, consider the one piece, right? So the, the other piece we just uh, uh, multiply by 2. So we need to integrate from B1 to B2 from H1 to H2. This is a neutral surface, y will be this uh, H over 2 plus y. So this one will be dx. So then, this one will be equal to 2 times B1, B2, H1, H2. So we can put the dx here. Okay, so we can integrate. So this one will be
I'm going to allow this one. So it will be B2 minus B1 Here, because H2 minus H1 is very small, right? So that means, uh, okay, if H2 minus H1 is uh, 0.01, so then H2 squared minus H1 squared will be uh, much, much smaller, right? So that means we can get rid of this one. So now, more the measure will be So remember, okay, B2 minus B1 multiplied by H2 minus H1 will be A over 2. So it will be, this is a moment measure, okay. Well, such model of, okay, it's a moment measure divided by H over Q. So it will be equal to, it will be half AH. So you can see there's an ideal flange, even you know it uh, does not exist, right? The second model is it's a 0.5. This one is much higher than that so square cross section and also circular cross section, right? And also to be uh, realistic, right? This one does not exist. And so the the, the realistic wet flange will be like this. So that means you have to put some material in between, right, to connect them together. So for that white flange, flange second model is always 0.35 AH. Okay, so even this 0.3 AH is uh, more than two times higher than that, that one, right? So that's why, okay, for the real way, you know, because this one has a higher section modulus, so we prefer using this, uh, this, uh, this shape, okay? Okay, let me give uh, give you another two examples to show okay um, how to design um, themes. Okay. So in this example, we have a simple beam. with a pin support and also with roller support and we have uniformly deferred. So load intensity Q1 is equal to 400 pounds per foot. The span length is 12 feet. Uh, we know the allowable stress is equal to 1800 PSI. And also wood weight thirty five pounds per uh, foot square uh, foot uh, uh, foot cubic. Okay. So we need to figure out what's the what's the size, what's the dimension also beam should be, okay. Based on appendix G. Okay. So before we 
move forward to discuss this uh, problem. Okay, I will show you this appendix uh, G. Okay, I will upload it. Well, I will scan, upload this uh, uh, table to the blackboard. Okay, today. So, how to okay? How to use this table? Okay. So generally, okay, if we are looking for the dimension, right? So we know the, we know the law of stress. We know it's equal to bending moment divided by section modulus, right? So we know this allowable, we can, if we give a load, we can calculate the bending moment, then we can get the section modulus, right? So in this table, the beam, okay, with a rectangle cross section, you will see, okay, this is a 1, 1. This is a 2, 2. So based on different dimension, okay, you will have different section modulus, okay? So let me give you one example, like if the dimension is like uh, um, five by uh, four by six, okay? So then you will have section model of one is equal to seventeen point six five cubic inch. Section model of two is equal to eleven. 23 could be the issue. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, probably you still remember, okay, if we have a, a beam, we, we prefer using this way, right? So then the section model will be higher, okay? If you put it this way, okay, the size is the same. But the section model will be three because the section model is equal to right. So this one is higher, right? H will be higher. This one, this one H is uh, smaller, but width is larger. This okay. Uh, this one width is smaller. Okay. Let me give you. Uh, I think I give you example before, right? If this one is uh, ten. This one is forty. So this is. Uh, 40, this is a 10. So for this section models will be 10 multiplied by 40 square. Right? This one will be 40 multiplied by 10 square. Right? So this one will be this one will be so you can see the second model for this one is much higher than this one, right? So, okay, once you have a beam for this uh, dimension, section model 1 means, okay, 1, 1, that means you just, uh, you just uh, put the beam like this. For 2, kind of, you, you put the beam like this one, okay? So, generally, okay, if you have a piece of wood you want to place to support something, so you want to uh, use it at most, right? So you want to have higher uh, section models, right? So you just look for the maximum uh, section models. No, okay. So kind of, you know, you can calculate the uh, maximum bending moment, you can get a section modulus. Then with the section modulus, you can se select a dimension, right? So then you have this section modulus. So when you have this section modulus, you will see the width per linear the last column, okay? So like this one, the weight uh, per linear for uh, load intensity, okay, will be equal to 4.7. So that means we are talking about the real wood, right? The real material. So it has, it has weight, right? So no matter you have a piece of aluminum, or you have a piece of steel, or you have a piece of wood, it has weight, right? So that means you have to consider the self-weight. Okay, so then when you consider the self weight, you have a new law, right? So you, have, you need to combine this one and this one together, so you have a new maximum bending moment, right? So once you have a new bending moment, you will have a new section model. 
Okay. So you need to make sure this new section model is less than the one you select. Okay. So let me give you an example, okay? Like based on here, you calculate section modulus is equal to 14.5 or something, okay? How to select the, the dimension? Okay, generally you plus two or three, okay? Generally. The section modulus plus two or three. That means, okay, 16 or 17, right? So this one is a 17.65. Probably that selection is good. So you may ask why I cannot select a higher one, right? So higher one means you need to increase the dimension. That means you will use more material, right? So your boss will not be happy, right? So you cost too much. So generally, when you calculate the sector modulus, you plus two or three, then go to this table to get a dimension, then you have a sector modulus. Then you need to get, figure out the weight of that beam. Then you will, you, you will have this one, right? So have a new form load, including the self-weight. Then you can calculate the maximum bending moment. Then you have a new second modulus. And make sure this second modulus, the new second modulus is less than the one you select. So that means your selection is good. OK, let's practice using this example problem. So we have a simple beam with uh, uniformly reinforced, right? So now we know the maximum bending moment will be at the middle point. So it will be QL squared divided by 8. Okay, you can use this equation directly. So here I will demonstrate again, right? So because it's a symmetric load, right? So each here, here I will take a same load, right? So uh, R A will be Q I over Q, R B will be Q I over Q I. Each of, each of them will take half. Okay, the middle point has maximum bending moment, right? So now you can use either left segment or right segment to calculate the bending moment later, right? And we have this point load applied Q I over 4. Okay, so then you will have half, half load applied, right? On this segment. So it's uniform, uniformly reinforced. It can be regarded as point load in the middle, right? So the moment will be R A multiplied by I over two minus this is the whole water, this is dumped water, right? Two. So this will be the arm. This will be I over four. It's a half load, right? So then this one will be QI over 2 multiplied by I over 2 uh, minus QI over 8. So. so it will be QI squared divided by 8, right? So see this one? So for this, uh, this uh, uh, if you have a single beam with a uniform reverse, you can give the maximum bending moment in that form directly, okay? So uh, that's okay. Okay, so the maximum bending moment will be, this one will be 420 pounds per foot. So this one will be 7560 pounds. Okay, because you know the allowable uh, normal stress is 1800 psi, right? So we need to convert it into pounds uh, inch. So this one will be equal to. 90720. So 
Now we have the maximum bandit movement, right? Okay, we know the normal stress is equal to maximum bandit moment divided by spectral models, right? Spectral models will be 9, 0, 7, 2, 0. So this one will be AD, uh, sorry, 50.4. Okay, we got this uh, section models. Then you look at the table, you will see just a plus two or three, right? So, um, you will have, okay, uh, beam. 3 by 12, okay, section modulus is equal to 52.73 and uh, the load, okay, Q2 is equal to 6.8 pound per foot. Okay, so kind of once we have this maximum bending moment, you get the section modulus, then you select the beam. Then you have the load intensity. That means, okay, we have a new load, right? This Q2 is 6.8 pounds per foot, right? Now, okay, still is a uniformly due force. So now the maximum bending moment, the location will not change, right? So it will be Q L square divided eight. So this one will be four hundred twenty plus six point eight. We combine them together, right? One by twelve. Eight. So this one will be equal to nine to one pump. I convert it into pump even directly. Okay. So now, once you have a new maximum bending moment, then you have a new section model. Right? Okay. So it will be nine two one eight eight eighteen is equal to fifteen one point two. Okay. So you have a new section model, right? So then you need to discuss, okay, because it's a 51.2 less than 52.73, right? So that means your selection is great. So that means, okay, even you consider the weight of the beam, okay, you consider the weight of the beam, okay, the beam will not be broken, right? So that means your selection is great. Let me give you another example. So we have a vertical post then the, the height is 2.5 meter and we we give a lateral load okay P is equal to 12 kilo newton. Okay. So the first question, if the post is solid, okay, and also the allowable stress is equal to 50 megapascal. Okay, what's the diameter should be? Okay. So look at this problem, it's a, uh, kind of a cantilever, right? Cantilever, then we have the maximum bending moment, 
okay, will be at, at the end, right? So maximum bundle mode will be low one by e, no, no, the length, right? So this one will be equal to 12 kilonewton multiplied by length is a 2.5 meter. So this one will be um, 30 kilonewton meter, right? So then diameter, okay, we know, okay, the normal, the uh, normal stress is equal to maximum binding, mom, uh, binding moment divided by section modulus, right? So apparently this one is a circular cross section. So then we know the section modulus is equal to pi, right? So this one will have a diameter. So that means we can calculate the section modulus. So section modulus is equal to 30 kilonewton meter divided by 50 megapascal. We have to play uh, units, uh, so we can play it right now. Okay. So section modulus is equal to, so we can work the new kilonewton to newton, right? So 30 multiplied by 1,000 newton meter, right? divided by 50 megapascal to pascal, right? So pascal means uh, Newton per meter square, right? So now we have this one will be what? Will be Okay, this one will be equal to oh, this one allowable allowable stress is a fifty not fifty. Okay. Fifteen. So this one will be fifteen. So this one will be uh, three. So meter, right? So it will be equal to right. Yes. Okay. So now we have a uh, second modulus is equal to pi p cubic thirty two, right? So now. So D will be equal to D will be equal to 0.273 meter. Okay. So this is uh, the the first uh, uh, question. Okay. Next uh, second question. Okay. <clears throat> so if the the uh, the pulse is uh, uh, hollow, okay. And also the uh, uh, lava stress, this time is uh, 50, okay. Now we have 50. And also we know the thickness is, one is of outer diameter. Okay, so this is a hollow tube, right? So remember, for the hollow tube, the moment measure, the moment measure will be pi So this is the outer diameter, this is the inner diameter, okay? This is for the hollow tube. So uh, we still have the maximum binding moment is equal to uh, 12 kilo newton multiplied by 2.5 meter is 30, 30 thousand, right? So newton meter, yes. 
So now we have the lower stress is equal to uh, maximum bending moment divided by section modulus. Right. So we can get the section modulus is equal to uh, Newton per meter square, right? So this one will be equal to uh, 0.6, 4.0, 7.0. Or you can write it in 6.0. So this one will So, okay, so we have a moment measure here for the hollow tube. Section modulus will be equal to moment measure divided by outer diameter. Okay. Divided by 2. So it will be equal to right. So we know the thickness. The second is uh, so we have this outer diameter d2, right? So second is second is is uh, one is d2. So that means d1 will be equal to d2 minus two times second is right. So we have one conversion here, another conversion here, right? So that means it will be d2 minus 1x d2. So it will be 3 quarter, right? Okay, 3 quarter d2. Okay, so d2 is equal to 3 quarter Oh, sorry, d1 is equal to 3 dot quarter d2, right? So now we have section modulus is equal to 6.0 times is equal to pi. Three quarter d2. So now you can calculate the T2 is equal to uh, is equal to 208 millimeter. Or you can write 0.208 meter. Okay. So this one, okay, we uh, we just want to discuss, okay. So if you have a cantilever, then the, you will give a point load, then you can calculate the maximum bending moment. Then, uh, and also it's a hollow tube, how to uh, calculate the moment measure for the hollow tube and also section modulus for the hollow tube. Okay. Okay, let's use the last example to uh, end this section, okay? So the last example problem is uh, 57 on page uh, 473. So we have a simple beam, we have pin support, and then we have roller support, right? And also we have uniform the total beam, uh, the length of total the total length of the beam is uh, 12 plus 3 plus 6. So we have uniform force on this segment and another segment on the uh, on the right end. The lower stress is 1800 psi, it's a wet flange. Okay, we need to use appendix form on F1A, okay, it's wet, it's a wet flange. So in this one, okay, as we discussed, uh, you know, uh, we want to look for the maximum uh, bending moment, right? So just a look at the beam. So you have this uh, uniform force. So that means uh, this one, the total length is 12 feet. This one, you have uniform force at the highest uh, 6 feet. That means the maximum bending moment will be on this side, right? So uh, we know, okay, the maximum bending moment because of the slope. The slope of bending moment divided is equal to shear force. That means we, we need to look for a point. That point has shear force of zero, right? So, but before that, we have to calculate the reaction force at A and B, right? 
So for this one, we know the total allow, uh, uh, total uh, load along y direction is equal to zero. So we have R A plus R B is equal to two thousand multiplied by twelve plus two thousand multiplied by six. Right. So it will be equal to thirty six. Okay, now we know okay, this is a pin support. Like you can use, because it's a single beam, right? You can use the moment here is equal to zero, the moment here is equal to zero. You can use i's and to calculate, right? So we use this one. So now we have this one can be regarded as a point load, so it will be 2000 multiplied, the load will be this one, right? arm will be half, so it will be. Uh, 6. So 12 divided by 2, right? 6. So this is a contribution. We have this contribution plus 2000 multiplied by 6. Arm will be okay. The center will be here, right? So 12 plus 3 plus another 3. So I prefer write it, okay, the total divided by 2, right? So uh, just in case you guys are lost, okay? Now, should this one clockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, right? So you call me. And then we can calculate direction force at B is equal to seventeen thousand one forty pound. R A will be equal to eighteen pound force. Okay. So now we, we have this uh, reaction force, right? We, we want to look for the maximum bending moment, okay? We, we, then we need to figure out, okay, what's, where, which location has the shear force, you know, which is equal to zero, right? So now, okay, it will be here as we discussed, okay? So, shear force, like if we assume, okay, it's uh, somewhere here, right? So then we will use this part to analyze it. So now we have Ra minus shear force uh, 2000. We don't know what's the length of that, right? So it will be equal to 0, to zero right? So x will be equal to So when we get this one, okay, so this is R A, this is uniform unit force, right? So 2000 multiplied by 9.43, right? So we need to look for the maximum bending moment here. Okay, so the maximum bending moment will be <coughs> this one will hold water, right? R A multiplied by 9.43 is a dump water minus 2000 9.43 divided by this is a 9.43 divided by 2, right? This is the arm. So this moment will be equal to this one will be uh, ADH92 uh, Okay, so now section modulus is equal to maximum binding moment 
divided by the allowable stress, right? So this one is. Convert into inch. So divide by 18. So this one will be equal to 59.3. So now you guys are familiar, okay, we need to go to the table, then just a plus a two or three, right? So you look at the table, 59.3. Okay, the just a plus or two, okay. So now we have beam. Wide flange 12 by 50. The section modulus is 64. 64.2. Okay, there's no uh, just a 62 or something. Right? <clears throat> the closest one is a 64.2. Okay, so now we use this one, and then we will we will get weight per Foot is equal to 50 pound. Okay, so this one is in the second column. Okay. Now, so generally, generally, this one will not uh, change the location like this. So this the total is 12 of feet, right? So here we have we have nine. 0.43, right? So just uh, around, okay? So that means, uh, you know, it will not jump to this section, okay? Uh, so then, the next step, we need to figure out, okay, what's the new maximum value, right? And then we have a new section modulus, okay? Just a repeat. So apparently, okay, then we have a new load applied, right? This one is 50 pounds per, uh, per foot. So you need to calculate, uh, okay, so then we need to recalculate. R A, R B, right? So to save time, I just give you the new uh, R A is equal to uh, 19,000. So when you have the new rack and force, okay, we can get the maximum bending moment. So we can get a, a location for the uh, when the shear force is equal to zero, right? So then x r a. We can combine them together, okay? So this one will be this one, right? So the shear force is equal to zero was the maximum bending moment, right? So then, shear force is equal to R A minus, right? So this one is uh, 19,380. So x will be equal to 9.45. Okay, so we have a new location. And then we can get to the maximum bending moment. It will be equal to Ra multiplied by this 9.5 minus 2. This one will be the new one will be nine one six zero five.
Okay, so section modulus will be equal to 91605 divided by 18. So this one will be equal to 61.1. Okay, you can see this is 61.1 less than this is 64.2, right? So that means your selection is great. So this uh, uh, this uh, uh, design uh, design for beams, okay. So kind of uh, no matter uh, you have a rectangle cross section, you have wide phalanx cross section. So we need to figure out the maximum bending moment first, okay. Definitely you need to calculate the reaction force first, right? Then you need to locate which point has the shear force which is equal to zero, right? Then you can guess the maximum bending moment. Then you will have a section modulus. Uh, then you can select a beam. Uh, then you will figure out the load, uh, the load uh, uh, intensity, right? Then you will recalculate the uh, maximum bending moment. Then you have a new section modulus. Then you need to compare this new section modulus with the one you select. So if, uh, if you have this relationship, that means your selection is good.